Okay, for part two, what would you expect to observe when solution of iron three added to solution of aldehyde? Iron three and aldehyde, you notice uh, this question is a little bit simpler because they straight away focus on the ions that we need to consider. I only need to compare the iron three plus and iron minus. So iron three plus and iron minus, if you put them together, it is quite easy to deduce. I know that iron three plus will be reduced to iron two plus. I minus will be oxidized to I2. So I can easily choose the relevant half equation from the uh, data booklet. But for feasibility questions, typically what we have to do is we just have to decide, okay, who is oxidized and who is reduced. And I have to choose the relevant half equation from the data booklet. Then after that, I go and calculate the E cell, see whether the reaction is feasible or not feasible, depending on whether E cell is positive or a negative. And for feasibility uh, question, I think for A levels, the feasibility question should be pretty simple. Even if they give us a salt, maybe like iron three nitrate, we should be able to deduce which is the species that will be taking part in the redox reaction. That means the other ion, the counter ion, should be something relatively stable. Maybe like iron three sulfate. Sulfate is stable. Will not be involved in the redox reaction. We can ignore that. I only need to focus on iron three plus. Then maybe for aldehyde, we will use like for example potassium aldehyde. Potassium K plus it is very stable, so we will ignore potassium. I only need to worry about I minus. So if you put these two solutions together, iron three sulfate and potassium aldehyde, we will only still only focus on iron three plus and I minus. So comparing this as mentioned, if I decide that my iron three plus will be reduced, I will choose the iron three plus. It will be on the left hand side of the half equation. I minus it is oxidized, I will find this guy on the right-hand side of the half equation. And this half equation, once I've chosen, uh, what we have to keep in mind is when you calculate the E cell, the redox reaction has already been fixed. We have already determined who is reduced, iron three plus. We have already determined who is oxidized, I minus, because the, react the question uh, gives me that iron three plus is present and I minus it is present. We don't choose or uh, we don't decide who is oxidized or reduced by looking at the E value anymore. Because this is not an electrochemical cell question. Only when we do electrochemical cell, where the system can be both oxidized or reduced, then we will let the system choose who wants to be oxidized will be oxidized, who wants to be reduced will be reduced. Because all the components that can be oxidized and reduced are there. But for feasibility question, only ion three plus it is present, ion two plus it is not there, so this one can only undergo reduction. It cannot be oxidized. And only I minus is present. I2 is not present. So this one can only undergo oxidation. It cannot be reduced. So the reaction is fixed by the question. When we calculate E cell, when we decide who is oxidized or reduced, uh, we don't do this by looking at the E value, but rather looking at whatever terms that is given in the question. In this case, if I've already determined ion three plus is reduced, I minus is oxidized, then I can calculate E cell, right? Reduction minus oxidation. I can show that this is a positive value. If this is a positive value, it means that the reaction is feasible, then uh, we can describe the process based on whatever reaction that takes place. In this case, ion three plus will be reduced to ion two plus. So the color change involved, ion three is a, it is a yellow solution. Ion two plus, this is a green solution. We can say that the solution changed from yellow to green. Then I two is a form. If, it is a solid, it will be a black crystal. We can also say that I have a yellow solution, then I form a brown solution because of my I2, if it is equals, if it dissolves in the solution. So either one of the observation is fine, as long as we can predict that this is a feasible reaction, then based on whatever product that is being formed, we can figure out the observation subsequently.